Hey gang, just want to take a second of your time here to give a shout out to our friend of the show, Cody Walker, who composed our and performed our theme here that we you hear every time you listen to an episode of News Little Podcast. He has an album out and it's called Demography. And it is available exclusively on Spotify. So if you are a subscriber to the po- podcast and use it on Spotify, why don't you type in Demography and give that album a check out. Because uh, Cody was kind enough to do our music for free and we want to help him in any way we can because he is a very talented artist and he is also from the Smithfield, North Carolina area. He is a graduate of West Johnson High School, so this is a local guy. So give it a listen. It's kind of like a John Denver, easy listening, man with a guitar on a stool just performing good songs. Check it out. Greetings, Noose Little Pod listeners. This is your host, Matt Gore, reminding you to please like, follow, subscribe, and share the podcast on your available podcast apps such as Spotify, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, iHeartRadio, and any other podcast app you can think of. Share our episodes on Facebook and let us know what you think with a comment or review. Now please enjoy the show. Hello, and welcome to News Little Podcast, an audio program discussing the almost 50-year history of News Little Theater and the backstage antics and stories that come along with running a community theater in a small town. I'm your host, Matt Gore, and we are coming to you from NLT Stage and Base of Operations, the little log cabin located on the banks of the News River in Smithfield, North Carolina. We lovingly refer to it as The Hut. Hey there, gang, and this is another episode of Noose Little Podcast. I am here tonight with a very special guest. We are continuing our series of outside looks at theaters located in the uh, eastern part of our state here. Um, and this week, I have somebody whom this is the actually the first time we've ever met. Uh, I've known of this gentleman uh, through mutual friends, but we actually just met a couple of minutes on the porch. His name is D.H. Johnson. He is part of Benson Little Theater. He was kind enough to come down and uh, be on our show tonight, and we really thank him for that. How are you doing? I'm great. Thank you for having me do this. I think this is wonderful what you're doing. Well, we appreciate it. Um, some people are asking, uh, we, like, we, don't have any, we don't have any shows going. We don't have any camps, any classes, or anything like that going mm-hmm. on at NLT. And I wanted to do an outside look because I knew a lot of theaters in the area were announcing their seasons. And yours was one of those seasons I saw. Yes. I'm like, Benson's been down the road for many, many years, and there's been overlap before. People that have come here and done stuff, people have gone there that, uh, that'll do stuff. Yes. But maybe it was time to reestablish a connection there mm-hmm. and see what the, the current day uh, Benson Little Theater looks like. So we wanted to invite you down, sir. I am so glad you asked me. <laughs> so what uh uh how did you get involved with benson little theater and what is your basically tell me about this creative team you were telling me about off okay. my okay okay i got involved with the the benson little theater uh on about 20 years ago and and i was asked to be on the benson foundation for the arts board which is the the organization that funds the Benson Little Theater and other arts projects in the area uh, of Benson. And so uh, about 20 years ago, I directed a couple of shows. I directed Annie Get Your Gun and uh, You're a Good Man, Charlie Brown. And uh, Nola Woodall, who helped found the Benson Little uh, well, Benson Little Theater and the Benson Foundation for the Arts. She asked me to get involved, and that was 20 years ago. Then I took a little hiatus and went off to New York for uh, 11, 12 years and came back, and they asked me to get involved again. So uh, I came back and started directing some plays and, and acting in some. And now the Benson Little Theater has its own sort of committee, side committee that handles just the theater stuff. And we have a new uh, artistic manager, uh, Jerry Keith Lyles, that came on board a few months ago. And, uh, and she asked me to be on this Benson Little Theater committee. Does that sound complicated enough? <laughs> <laughs> I believe I got it. Uh. Yes. And uh, so that Benson Little Theater committee cho- chose a new season. And then what's the, the idea is that they work on the play readings and the play selections and then pitch that to the, the BFA, the Benson uh-huh. Foundation for the Arts, and then they okay it, you know. And, and so far it worked 
this is the first time we've done it like that, and it worked rather smoothly. So. Awesome. Yeah. Well, tell us about your new, uh, your upcoming season. This is your first season back since COVID and all that. Yes. What you had Guys and Dolls get canceled right around that time. We were about four weeks into rehearsal for Guys and Dolls uh, last year, and mm. and then everything closed and uh, had a what a what a what a challenging year for anybody who's worked in theater anywhere mm -hmm. in the world really uh but we're back and we're going to push that guys and dolls will be the last show in the season coming up in 2022 so it's just a two-year yeah, delay just a two -year gap. yeah and uh, i hope everybody remembers their lines <laughs> they and their studying. choreography yes they should have been studying this whole time <laughs> i know right uh, so the new season, we decided, will start in uh, November, and that is with Annie. And I think the decision is, like a lot of theater companies are doing, trying to find a big money maker, mm -hmm. something that appeals to a wide audience. Right. And <laughs> yeah. there's a handful of those shows, and uh -huh. Annie is one of them. So that's why we went with Annie first. It reminds me of one of my favorite theatrical-related memes of the pandemic. <laughs> where they said, uh, listen, when we get back to theater, we're going to get back to what's important, the issues, <laughs> yes. and inclusivity, and new ideas. Thought-provoking thought theater. That's right. <laughs> Cut to April 2021. We're doing Greece, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> That's I know. right. We're doing Annie. We're doing Greece. We're doing... <laughs> right. Give me that money. <laughs> and what's I your... get it. I get it. I get it. <laughs> I, you know, I, and I'm I'm sort of with that meme you're talking about. You know, everybody kind of wants to do something other than those three or four shows that are done over and over and over. Not that they're bad shows; no. they're fantastic shows, and that's and they work uh, decade after decade. It was just we knew we had ideas for something different, but there was some money spent in the last year, year and a half, on some new lighting equipment and mm -hmm. some technical things. Uh, and we decided we needed to replenish the the bank account. Yes, so to well, speak. Well, when you're when you when you're uh, dark for unforeseen reasons, you're still spending money on stuff, and yeah. there's nothing coming in. So you got to go with what will put money back in the pocket, and that's the shows people really love come to see. So you know people that's are going to show up for them. So, right. Yeah. Yeah, and I, it's completely pragmatic. Completely pragmatic, and, and and believe me, you're not the only one. Everybody else that that, that first show back is probably, probably uh, a well-known show. Yeah, it's either going to be a big musical or something that they can bring all the family to and the grandkid, or the, the grandparents that'll bring uh, fill all the seats. Yes. Yeah, I'm interested to see. You know, a lot of the the websites that own the rights to the plays and musicals, they have a section I think that you can look at to see who else in the country or the world is doing yeah. the show. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm interested to see how many people are doing Annie, Grease, Sound of Music. Mm -hmm. uh, what else What else would be a huge, probably Steel Magnolias, you know, all those, yeah. those chestnuts of the, the yeah. theater And we probably world. would have done the same thing if we weren't lazy and didn't want to take the set that's half built down <laughs> and do something else. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I'm looking at the set right now. It's a perfectly good set. You could do a... 1100 shows on this it, this it is it is, it, it is it's been up a while it's been up a while so yeah um this this is never too late set and we was like you know if we do something different in a different order and we don't do it first then we're going to, have to take the set down and redo it later so let's just do it again absolutely so that's the plan <laughs> i don't know you could do grease on this set <laughs> So basically, let's get into your okay. upcoming season. You said Annie. So, so November is Annie. Uh, then in February, uh, we're doing The Foreigner. Larry Shoes, mm -hmm. one of the two comedies. I guess he wrote two before he had a tragic end to his career. And, oh, The Foreigner's uh, great. I think we've done it twice. Yeah. So. We've never done it. The, the, the Benson Little Theater has, has really produced a lot of musicals, but right. not that many plays. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so we're trying to get back into doing a, a lot of the, well, the plays we've never done. You have a very interesting talent pool in Benson. There's a lot of, uh, when I when I worked down there and volunteered down there, there were a lot of pageant kids. 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so you have a lot of singers, a lot of dancers. So of course, you're going to do musicals because that's the draw. So right. yeah, I mean, you, you you play towards your talent pool. And yeah, yeah, and I hope they'll show up for Annie. <laughs> that's all I can say. Fingers crossed. But no, the Foreigner is a great show. It's it's yeah. so funny. It is extremely funny. And uh, um, I uh, while Mita was saying that, I looked uh, up Larry Shu on uh, Wikipedia. Mm-hmm. Shu's success was short-lived. At the age of 39, he died in the crash of a Beach 99 commuter plane en route to Shenandoah Valley Regional Airport yep. near Ware's Cave, Virginia. Wow. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, he was only 39. That sucks. He did, did the nerd, right? And, yes, the nerd and the foreigner are, are his two big pieces. And um, he was also an actor. Yeah. He was an actor yeah. on Broadway. Both mm-hmm. of those shows are about being an odd duck in a mm-hmm. situation. So. Somewhat mistaken identity, which you can't go wrong with in comedy. And, and it just gets nuttier and nuttier. But I just, you know, that just, it makes me sad because those two plays for Larry Shu were such huge hits off Broadway when they premiered. And that was early mid 80s. And they've been produced ever since. Can you imagine if he'd lived the, the body of work? I think somebody once said that he could have been, you know, the next Neil Simon of comedy, just mm-hmm. as far as the body of work that could have come from him. But that was it. Right. You know? So, and moving on from that, mm-hmm. what was after that one? After that, in March, um, uh, all these shows are running two weekends, by the way, except for one of them, which is called Oldies But Goodies 2, Jamming with the Jukebox. And as you said earlier... We have so much talent that can sing and dance in the area. And a lot of people, you know, you're putting a lot of your time into doing a show. You're putting two months into a musical, at least, you know, and rehearsal process. But a, a talent, it's not a talent show. It's more, it's more, it's just a variety, music variety show. You can go in and rehearse this in two weeks. Right. And not every day of the week, you know, two or three nights uh, a week for a couple of weeks. And you've got a show, as long as you've got a nice set. And we did a show like this uh, called Oldies But Goodies. It was just called Oldies But Goodies uh, a couple of years ago. And it, and it did very well, and people enjoyed it. And our director is uh, Beth Rogers, and she wants to do another one. And we said yes to that. <laughs> <laughs> very little overhead, so that's a good one. Absolutely. You know, yeah. yeah. Uh, so it's music of the 50s through the 70s, and uh, have a band in it. So, and uh, basically, the oldies but goodies is, was is that this is a show with like a, a book and lyrics and everything? No, there's no book to it. It's just basically a, a host. It's kind of like the Ed Sullivan show, uh. a host talks, which I was the host last time, uh, just introduces a little about the songs or the artists that originally did it, and then the... Uh, Local talent sings, dances, whatever. Like a, a variety show, not a talent show per yeah, se, but a it, variety show. It's gotcha. a complete variety show of uh, anything from Elvis to the uh, to the village people. <laughs> yeah, it's a combo. Interesting. Um, so you, you said that one's the only show that's one weekend, though. Right. That's what. Uh, yeah, a three day weekend for that. And before we wrap up your seat, where do you perform your shows? And these are all at the Benson Little Theater which is the W.J. Barefoot Auditorium, 303 East Church Street in Benson. (laughs) Which is the old school. It was was the old school in high school, and it was renovated in 1989. And uh, the theater has been in that old auditorium, which was completely refurbished in, in 89, but the theater started in 2000. So it's been 21 years of Benson Little Theater. Gotcha. Yeah. And it's, it's a nice building. It's good. I mean, you've got some nice wing space. You got you don't have much backstage space, if I remember correctly. But There's nothing exactly <laughs> backstage except insulation. But uh, in the wings, there's, you know, a few yeah. feet to, to stuff some bodies. Yeah, I, I mean, some actors. To, I was trying to remember. I was like, oh, yeah, I know you got nothing backstage. There's a hallway. You have to go out into the hallway uh-huh. and across the hall to, like, the, the big room back there to have a dressing room, if yeah. I remember correctly. Yeah. All right, so let's move on to your very last one there. The last show of the season will be Guys and Dolls, which mm-hmm. is a two-year delay uh, since uh, COVID came along. And, uh, yeah, Guys and Dolls are you, in um, April. Are you re-auditioning, or is everybody coming back to redo? That is, that is a topic of discussion right now. We have asked everyone who had been cast if they were still on board with it. Right. And there are 
<laughs> as always, when you send out emails to people, there are, I don't know, maybe a quarter of them that never respond. <laughs> You can say you have a million dollars to give them and they won't respond. So I, we'll, we think most people will be back, except there are a few that have conflicts. Some, I think some people are going to go off to school, right, you know, yeah. some high school uh, students that have graduated and will be in college by then. Uh, so we're not quite sure exactly who that is yet, but the intention is to cast it as it was two years ago. Yeah. There's no perfect scenario for that. There's, yeah. no, there's no way to talk it out and where everybody will be happy with that type of scenario. So you just got to do I the know. best you can and then move on. Um, so that sounds like an exciting season for you guys. Thank and you. Uh, is We're there, excited. <laughs> is there like a website we can check out? Uh, yes. Uh, simply www.bensonlittletheater.com. <laughs> <laughs> well, that makes it easy. So... Yeah. Um, What's your audition process? Like you guys have, uh, from what I can tell, mm -hmm. a rather unique kind of audition process. Tell me about that. I think every, certainly community theaters all handle it differently. I, I think the, what I like doing, I do not like to, to, just as an actor, because I do act as well as paint and build sets and direct. I don't like to audition in front of other people who are auditioning. And a lot of theaters, do you guys yeah. do that? Do you, oh, yeah. Is it sort of We've, an open audition and everybody sort of sits and generally, watches? Generally, yes. Our, our <laughs> auditions are open auditions where I have been up. to one where it was not. But but, but sometimes, we, depending on the director, yeah. sometimes they'll do it that way. They'll, yeah. they'll have a closed audition where you come in by yourself. But that's, that's typically very rare for I, us to do that. I like that. And I... I know it takes a little bit longer in the in the logistics of getting people in and out of the theater when they audition, but what, what we have done recently in the last few years is uh, closed auditions, basically one actor at a time, maybe you pull in two if it's a scene to read or something, uh, and directors and a runner goes from stage to uh, backstage wherever the actors are in holding. Uh, looking at sides and uh, warming up their voices and they all come in one at a time do their song if it's a musical and and read a side from a from the script but this year we're adding something new to that we're doing a full season audition as opposed to a single show audition and and that means all four of these shows the directors for all four shows will be in the uh, auditorium and then the actors come in one at a time, do a song, do a scene, and if a director wants to see them read another scene that they may not have considered, they can go out, get a side, look at it, and come back in and do it. So if you go into the season audition thinking, I want to be an Annie, and that's the only one you want to do, fine. Get a side from the Annie script, sing your song, and uh, if we don't see you in another role as, as a director, will say thank you very much and, and consider that. But there may be some people we go, gosh, you'd be great in this show too. So that's, that's how we're going to run this thing. Right. It's a new process, and uh, for at least for the Benson Little Theater. I know loads of theaters. Yeah, I was going to say other theaters do have that. done that. And I've, I've auditioned for other theaters who have done that. And the, the, the good side of that is you, everybody gets to see everybody. You're op if you're open to doing other shows at the theater, yeah. you can do it all at one time. Mm -hmm. And then if you're cast, then you know well in advance right. what you're going to be in, so you can plan the rest of your life. Around. Fill the calendar up in yeah. note. So that's always nice, so you're not like holding hope that you're going to get into a show, and you wait and wait, mm -hmm. and then you audition, and you don't get it, and you're like, well, I could have been in something else if I had just known that I wasn't going to get in the show. Uh, exactly. I, the only drawback that, you know, I think that keeps people from doing it more regularly is what happens when life changes between exactly. auditions and the show and you end up having somebody drop out and you know, blah, blah, blah. So it's, yeah, there's pros and cons to, yeah. to doing it either way. And I've already heard a couple of people say, well, I don't know where I'll be in April. or right. <laughs> And I said, well, if you audition and get a part, I know where you'll be. You'll be in this theater for two months. <laughs> but... You know, we know we're going to be up against a little bit of that. If it were yeah. high-paying jobs, you'd be like, yes, done. Right, Check, yeah. fill it out. But 
as far as community theater, where people are just volunteering their time, there is that, that option to go, well, we don't know what's happening, if we're going to do that trip, or if we're going to get that job, or right. whatever, you know. So. Uh, you know, you might even, might even be in the state by the time yeah, the show comes yeah. around. So, uh-huh. yeah, I mean, you know, it's, it's a little little more gray area there. But, no, there is there is a benefit to it. So, um, I, I like I said, I've, I've auditioned with a couple of theaters who did that, and I'm like, you know, this would actually be an interesting way to do it. But then... Again, we are in such a mobile area, so it's, you know, it's about 50-50 probably as to whether it's... That's why I love community theater. It does give everybody a chance. If they just try it, mm-hmm. if you just get up and just try it once, you'll see it's not as scary and, and impossible as they might think. Yeah, and those are always my favorite is people like, I don't, I don't know how you get up there and do it. I'm like, well, first of all, I'm, I'm playing to a house of 100 people when you're here, so... Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> You know, you probably have more people at your job than that. It's you know, it's not a big <laughs> right. deal, you know. But um, it's not live television. <laughs> after six weeks of rehearsal, trust me, you remember stuff. You don't think you do. You don't think you will be able to. I, I but it's amazing how much you'll remember. You know, and that's the skin. You know, everybody's like, I don't think I can remember all those lines. Yeah, you can. Yeah, <laughs> you can. Isn't that funny? That is one of the first things you hear after a show. Somebody will come up and say, I don't know how you remember all them lines. And you go, well, I had about six weeks to do yeah. it. Exactly. I didn't do it overnight. And talking uh, about Benson Little Theater, uh, Mita, you've had, you, as you've mentioned already, you've had some experience at Benson Little Theater. So tell us about, uh, about from your perspective. Um... <laughs> I got asked to come and help, uh, and I couldn't tell you when. It was early on, I think, but uh, they needed somebody to run lights, and I want to say it was Tony Pender who was directing it, but I can't guarantee it. I'm pretty sure the first show I did was A Little Murder Never Hurt Anybody, and uh, uh, Reggie Parker was down there in the show, and that's part of the reason I think I got asked, but... um, I uh, I came down and ran lights for them, and then <laughs> once you're in, you're in. So I got requested <laughs> to come back a couple more times. And uh, the Benson Mafia. Well, <laughs> yes, that was the same way here. Once you show a little bit of uh, like talent and a little bit of interest, and suddenly you're like, we got somebody who does that. Can you come back and do the next one? Yeah. And before you know, it, you're doing it over and over again. So I was I I, I was the light goddess for a little while. Um, I did Sound of Music, uh, probably the first time it was done down there. I think you guys have done it a couple of times. Yeah, I, w- I think I w- Tony directed that, yeah, and I, I was Tony assistant director or something on that. I, so that we was had, my first one. What I remember about that show is he had the, the, the round stained glass window that lit up yeah. during Climb Every Mountain. It yeah. was really pretty. Yeah. <laughs> um, but what was fascinating was, now we had an old light board too, but you guys had something archaic that had toggle switches and that was the old xy board you know you had to set yeah. the lights on one end and, and you lit it with a match like yeah it was a gas <laughs> board. yes it was yes. <laughs> you had to make sure the hamster was on the wheel it was very exciting <laughs> that's all changed now oh good i'm glad you upgraded because <laughs> that was scary. all digital i don't know what it is it yeah. looks like a, a jet trying to land a jet plane. I have no idea how it works. <laughs> our, we haven't quite gotten there yet, but yes, that's the next step in ours. But no, we uh, we have at least a programmable board now so that we can use one little dimmer that, to turn lights on. Uh-huh. But uh, yeah, that's what I remember. And it was it was weird because there was like an A, B, C, and D. So like you've got two rows of, of dimmers, mm-hmm. and, and I'm saying this and people listening are probably going to go, I don't know what she's talking about. <laughs> But you could toggle switch them so like each light could be on a separate. I don't even remember how it worked except for the fact that if you looked at it, it looked sort of like you were trying to like fly the Apollo 11 mission because it was <laughs> flips and switches and crazy stuff. Yeah. And I worked in the the tech booth up there with a guy named Randy, who was Randy Holmes. A yeah. Sound. He was the the radio station yeah. guy or something. Yeah. Still there. It's wonderful. <laughs> well, he, I think he left for a while, but he's, he's back. So, I listen to him quite often. Yeah, he, uh, great. he and I got along really well in that tiny, tiny little room that we were in up there. Mm-hmm. And then I did actually get to be on stage once at Benson Little Theater. I was in uh, A Country Christmas Carol. Yeah. So with uh, the one thing I remember about that show was Ken Killebrew. Kenneth Killebrew. <laughs> 
<laughs> yes, he was so wonderful there. He 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 passed away a few months yeah. ago, and okay. he was such a, a a wonderful part of that place for so long. He and I Miss got him. along really well. I know he didn't get along with everybody. <laughs> <laughs> he was very much a Scrooge so ah, sometimes. I know. That's a perfect part, right? I know, exactly. Uh, he's but, wonderful. Uh, but he was a good guy. He was yes, very he sweet. Was. But the more hands you have, it, it's just, it just, it's easier. Oh, it yeah. works faster. And I, I just wish we could, I don't know, cast a magic spell and just have dozens and dozens of people lining up to, to do yes. all of that and and, and people people fail to realize that it's not just on stage if you don't want to be on stage you yeah. don't want to learn the lines you don't want to sing in front of people you don't want to get up you know have stage fright that's fine we need people to paint we need people to build we need people to Run stand at errands. the door go pick things up right. in a car that takes <laughs> two hours exactly to do it but you can't afford to let your main carpenter go to pick those things up because you lose two hours of set building exactly it's, there's so many simple little things that help just an hour at a time can you pick up one half of a sofa and drag it across the stage in the uh, dark <laughs> yeah <laughs> can you flip a light switch because sometimes that's all it takes yeah there's plenty yeah. of stuff for people to do it's just uh they they only thing people think about is the acting part of it it's like that's a small portion of mm -hmm. what is involved with theater and Every, every, you know, we really are blessed with that. We've got Benson, we've got here, we've got Goldsboro, we've mm -hmm. got um, uh, Carolina Youth Theater in Clayton. Yes. Yeah. Um, and then you've got, you can get a little further out, you can go to Raleigh, you can go to Garner, mm -hmm. you can go, you know, east. Dunn. Yeah, Dunn. The, the There's Dunn Garner down there. Regional. Yeah. Uh, you can even go further that way and go to the Gilbert or Cape mm -hmm. Fear and. We've got plenty of opportunities, and all of us, all of the groups need volunteers. So if yes. you've ever, ever thought that you wanted to be involved, show up. I promise you they'll find you something to do. <laughs> That's right. And I can speak from first-hand experience. It changed my life, so theater can change yours, too. Mm -hmm. um, so you have mentioned that some good things were happening at Benson. Now, looking towards the future... I'm going to throw you a curveball here. Okay. What are some, we'll put them into two categories. What are some realistic projects that you would like to see at, at Benson Little Theater? Plays, musicals, what have you. Okay. And what are some pie in the sky ones? Oh, my goodness. Uh, I would like to, you want to hear some titles that we've yeah. just tossed around to yeah, see yeah. what would happen. There's got to be one that's like, <clears throat> I'm going to do this show one day. Um. We have talked about Bonnie and Clyde. Ooh. Uh, we, were, we were trying to go through a list of newer musicals right. that aren't so technically impossible. Because right. most shows written in the last 20 years or so, the music is written for basically rock singers. Mm -hmm. It's written so high that your average local talent that's hard music. You know, you ask kids in, in summer camps, summer theater workshops, what do you want to do? They say Hamilton. And I say, I dare you yeah. right now to sing any of that music right now. Right, exactly. And of course, you know, it's, it's hard. But uh, there's a show called Hands on a Hard Body. Oh, yeah. That's delightful. We're just trying to figure out how to get a hard body on the stage. I have yeah. no idea what that show's about. It's, it's a, about a contest where you have to keep your hand on the, the, the truck oh. to win it. Is it a musical? It's a musical. Yes. Interesting. Terrific musical. But, you know, it, other than the hard body truck on stage, it's a fairly doable set. And nobody has to be flown in or flown out or helicopters don't have to land or... Yeah. There's uh, a reason why, like, the big, big musicals, there's, like, there's a reason why community theaters don't do Wicked. There's a reason why community theaters don't right. do Miss Saigon. You know, it's, yeah. it's just... Technically and impossible in skill. It's just crazy. Certain shows that I think everybody's waiting for Waitress to become yes. available, right? Because that is a very doable uh -huh. show on a small or large scale, however you want to do it. And it's a terrific show. What about Mean Girls? Mean Girls is, it, I think, is available soonish, right? I think that would be doable. I don't know the technical aspects of that show, mm -hmm. what is required. I never did see it. Um, it's got some fun music. 
Okay, so segueing into the final part of our show where I guess, you know, it's kind of the part where we get to talk about whatever we want to talk about. You said you went to uh, uh, New York for 10 years? I did. 10, 11, yeah, something like that. 2003 to 2014? Yeah, 11. Okay. I don't even know my own life. (laughs) (laughs) Math is hard. (laughs) So Uh, there's got to be at least one or two decent stories to come out yeah. of that experience yeah, i know i went up there to, to to try my my hand at trying to do it uh, professionally make a little money which i did a little bit of money you know, basically that was in commercials i got an agent which took forever to do but i got an agent did commercials and and then did a lot of off off Broadway stuff, and then started my own theater company because I thought, my gosh, I'm in these plays with all these people who have their own theater companies. I thought, I, I can do this. So, good lord, is it expensive? Unbelievable. Which um, is harder, getting an agent or starting a theater company? Oh, getting an agent, definitely. <laughs> I mean, clearly anybody can start a theater company. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, you know, and so there were all kinds of, of things. You know, I, that went on. Um, I don't know what kind of story you do want to hear. Do you want to hear? Oh, you went up there to be an actor, correct? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, so did you, uh, how close, how close did you get to Broadway? Did you get to Broadway? Did you oh, not? I saw many shows on Broadway. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. <laughs> what kind of, what was, you said you did mostly commercials and stuff like I, that. That's the, where the money was, uh, did commercials, um, what was the worst commercial? What's the best commercial you ever did and the worst commercial you ever oh, did? Oh, the best commercial. <laughs> there was a, it was for a Time Warner cable. And uh, there was a commercial where all these people were returning their Fios equipment. And I was the guy like in a, like in a UPS kind of office. Uh, and they're all just in line. I didn't have any lines. But everybody else was complaining to me about their Fios equipment. And I'm the guy that just basically takes it. And I, they're all, you know, filling my head with their awful stories with their Fios equipment. And so it was all very much facial reactions to this. And, and it was a lot of screen time of me doing this. And so I had these people, like, w- would recognize me on the subway. Like, are you, are you in a commercial right now? I'm like, yeah, yeah, I am, I am, I am. Uh, but the best thing about that was... Uh, there was a Kennedy's fried chicken around the corner from my apartment. And I went in there quite frequently because they had banana pudding. And you know, from well, North yeah. Carolina, you got to eat banana pudding. <laughs> and so I go in there one day, and the guy behind at the register is looking at me like I'm an alien. Mm. And then he's, you know, he's, finally he puts it together. He's like, are you, are you in a, are you in a, on TV and something, are you? And like, I'm in a commercial for Time Warner. Yeah. And he turns around to all the guys in the kitchen. Like, this is the guy. I said I knew this guy. I, I said I saw him on the TV and I knew him because he comes in here, he comes into my store. You know, he starts screaming. They're like, hey, yeah. I'm like, I'm not even, uh, you know, I'm not a star of any kind. I'm just in a commercial for 30 seconds. And they're in New York. And so <laughs> you're in New York, right? Yes. And yes. so they never had anybody that uh, that close to fame as you, the Time Warner cable guy. Not in that neighborhood. Walk through the doors <laughs> in New York at one point. <laughs> yeah. And so I, I think he was just, I think he saw it one day on television, right? And so he just, he saw me in the commercial uh-huh. and finally put it together that he knew that face because I would go into this Kennedy's fried chicken all the time. And so I order my food and the banana pudding. Well, I didn't have enough money <laughs> for my food. I only had cash on me and only enough cash to get, the, I guess, the chicken. And so I said, listen, I, I don't have enough money on me right now. I'll just, I, I won't get the banana pudding. And he says, that's okay. The banana pudding is on me. <laughs> so that's what fame will get you, <laughs> banana pudding. Very good. Ta-da. <laughs> What, what, what point is being famous if you can't get a freebie every so often? <laughs> I will say this. I, I think, you know, as, as you'll hear anybody talk about doing film or television, what, there's a lot of downtime. There's a lot of waiting for setups, and it's all lights and sound and everything. Right? 
So I am shooting a commercial. I'm up at four o'clock in the morning to go shoot one of three commercials for an insurance commercial. Well, the first two had to shoot first. So they don't get to me. I'm sitting on this set area, exterior set outside for ever. It was nearly, this was like three o'clock in the afternoon before they were getting to me. And it was a shot that was done in one shot on a crane. So the crane started above me and then lowers as I'm talking into the camera and comes right down in front of my face. So it's a one shot deal. There's no screw it up and we'll just pick it up from the here and edit that in. It had to be a one shot deal. Well, the, the director is not in a very good mood because he has shot all day long with these other two people who couldn't remember their lines. And I am not, <laughs> I am a, I'm not the best at getting the lines right with pressure. And I was like, good Lord, help me. Please don't let me screw this up because we're getting to the end of the day. We're shooting near an airport. The sun is going down. And I swear they spent nearly half an hour trying to figure out if my if I should have a wedding ring on or not wow and they're already going okay the sun's going down it's almost 3 30 we got this much time we got an hour we got less than an hour blah 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 the planes are flying over trying to land and buzzing and every thing that they're trying to record uh and they're spending 30 minutes. And I'm like nervous because I'm thinking they're gonna scream at me but if I screw my lines up on this one take on a crane shot that has to be reset every time. And I just don't understand. I don't understand why somebody spends that kind of time and money uh, to, uh, over a ring. And I saw it, you know, I, I've seen the commercial. I, nobody knows if I have a ring on or not. It's ridiculously <laughs> stupid, but whatever. That, it's that kind of thing that I don't like because I, I like to just do it, go work fast. Don't, don't spend time on stuff like that. But that's what it is. That's right. part of it. But I cashed a check. That was nice. <laughs> <laughs> I can eat today. Yay. I can eat meat. So yeah, you got, <laughs> I can, I can afford three lunches in uh, New York yeah. <laughs> or a house payment back in North Carolina. Either one. <laughs> it is true though. Yeah. Every time you leave the apartment, it's $20. You might as well just throw it in the street. Oh, yeah. I, I went and visited a friend who, uh, my friend Mike Wyndham, who went up there, and he's back up there, I think. He, he comes and goes quite often, but he works with Alvin Ailey Dance. Yeah. That's a great building. Yeah. Uh, uh, he, he went to School of the Arts and got his stage management uh -huh. degree, and then he, he started working with Alvin Ailey, and he... He would come home every so often and just tell him, I'm done. I don't want to talk to you guys anymore. And then they'd go, hey, Mike, you coming back to work? And he's like, yes. And, he <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> and so he'd go back up. So I think, and then he, he had some health issues, so he came home for a while. But okay. they, he's, he's back at it now, I think, from, uh, yeah. he's back in New York. But um, I went to visit him in 2002, I think. And uh, I spent like a week and he had like a an apartment in Brooklyn, and uh, he shared with a rocket at the time. Oh yeah, <laughs> it's like ooh, name drop. That's a lot of kicks. Yeah, and uh, so <laughs> so I slept on the couch anyway. Uh, but one of the things I remember about New York this this is my 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 one New York story about the people of New York. I was in Starbucks, <laughs> and they had the big giant picture window you know facing out on the street mm -hmm. and coming this direction was like the naked cowboy guy uh -huh. and coming this way was a guy in a cherub costume riding a big wheel and the two of them looked at one another and went and so and, yeah. and just crossed and kept walking and nobody else on the street acknowledged that they were there <laughs> and right. i just sat there and <laughs> watched the whole thing go down i'm like New York is crazy. Mm. <laughs> it is. And everybody's used to it. So nobody looks twice at things like that. They don't even care. It's so funny. And it's like when you go up there and you go to shows, it's like you stand at the stage door and these famous people are in the shows and they come out the yeah. stage door and people are nuts. And they're just like, all right, I'll see you tomorrow night. I'm going home. Right, gotta go. <laughs> gotta go home. Um, I, was, I was at a McDonald's in Times Square, which was near the equity building. And, and I'm just sitting there at a window having a snack or whatever it was with some friends and uh, 
and there's a you know a side of a, a, a truck, a semi truck or whatever, you know, the side of like a concert venue truck in Times Square, and there's a musician playing just at random, you know, blocked off a street so they could put the truck there, and it's Paul McCartney. <laughs> I'm just like, you know, back. Hello, where, DH. Where I come from, <laughs> you spend a lot of money and make yes. efforts to go to those concerts. There, you're eating a flurry and look out the window, and there he is just playing for yep. people who walk by. It was the weirdest thing. String pop, just reattaching. <laughs> just be a minute. It's, people it's, watching in New York is like one of the best pastimes I learned really fast. It's just find you a nice bench where nobody else is and just kind of sit and watch people walk by. Yeah. There's yeah. a million stories you in the Naked City. see a lot of crazy. Mm -hmm. I, watched, I watched an entire relationship fall apart on, at the, the, the library, Fifth Avenue Library steps. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I just sat there and watched and went. And they don't care. I feel it, so bad for them. Yeah, but they're going at it right there in public. Okay. Because they had like they had like little cafe tables or something set up, and they were sitting there, and he she was sitting there, and he came up and started talking to her, and she's she's very adamant, you know, like trying to figure out what's going on, and he basically, after this huge discussion, I never heard a word of what they were saying because they were too far away. He picked up his phone and sort of scrolled through it and stood up and walked away, and she just sat there. <sighs> And then got up and walked the other direction. I was like, I don't know what I just saw. <laughs> it was the most you, heartbreaking thing I've ever seen. What if you had seen like two actors just rehearsing for, for an acting class <laughs> yeah, yeah. or something? Maybe or, that's what it was. Was there a camera nearby? Yeah. There was, was not. It was not being filmed. But yeah, I uh, I went to see, I don't know where I saw. I went and saw Into the Woods and Vanessa Williams was in that. Uh-huh. Um, and the kid off of Gilmore Girls. That's, they actually mention it in the show that he went off to do Into the Woods. Yeah. Um, and then I went and saw... And that's the one where, I swear to God, the guy who sat beside me was the the the, the actor who played the Indian guy on Seinfeld who runs the, the restaurant. Uh -huh. I couldn't uh -huh. tell you who it is because I'm not a Seinfeld and aficionado, but he right. sat there and I was like, I know who that is. I know that. I know who that is. And he was very disappointed. His companion, the girl, the woman that he brought with her, was like, was not into the show. I was like, <laughs> he's like, how do you not like the show? Anyway, and then I went and saw Cabaret with Molly Ringwald uh -huh. yeah. at uh, Studio 54. Yeah. So, That's a great space. Oh, I'm so awesome. glad they finally turned that into a theater <clears throat> a few years ago. And they, uh, they, had, they had the tables at the, on the floor level. Mm-hmm. And you could get bottle service. They would come, the waiters yeah. would come by and, and take your order. And they champagne and stuff there. And then up at the top, they had, uh, they had a, a section that had little table between two seats. It had a little, like, cheetah lamp, cheetah lampshade lamp between them. It was very interesting. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and then the seat we were in were the cheap seats at the back. And, uh, they, uh, you know, you're, you're almost straight up in that space. Like, yeah. there's very it's little. Tall. Yeah. And then if you had waited until you, for at the time, now granted this was 2002, but uh, if you had waited till the day of show and walked up, you could have gotten a bar stool at the very top for 25 bucks. Oh, wow. So they That's had the, fun. they had those saved for last minute additions. And it was like super, super cheap to come right, see the show. Right. So I didn't oh, go quite wow. that, in, that inexpensive, but I think our seats were 40 bucks a piece. I don't even know what they'd run now. Uh, 130, <laughs> 40, 50, something like that. Maybe? I don't know. I know the floor seats were a hundred bucks a pop. Yeah. So I was like, I'm not spending a hundred dollars, particularly since I was buying. And that was 20 years ago? At least. Yeah, almost. Yeah. 2002? Yep. Yeah. Well, the only thing I'll add to that is I also believe Seinfeld is overrated. Um, <laughs> um, we're going to wrap up here uh, on this little podcast. We sure thank uh, uh, DH for coming down uh, and uh, being on the podcast. Thank you so much. And uh, Keep an eye out for their season. Yep, keep an eye out for their season. Yeah, That's some little theater dot com. That's yep. simple. Um, we'll see you there. Congratulations on your new season thank and uh, break a leg with it. And uh, same to you. Here. Thank you. Thank Looking you. Look forward to it. <laughs> All right, that's gonna do it for tonight's episode of Loose Little Podcast. All you take care out there. Credits for the show. Your host and creator is Matt Gore. That's me. 
My producer and editor is Mita Tool. That's me. Music is by Cody Walker. Uh, please go look up Cody on uh, Cody Walker Music on YouTube, and he's also on Cody Walker Music on Facebook as well. He's local, so uh, and he's got a couple of albums out. You know, uh, easy listening John John Denver type of uh, guitar voice that Cody Walker. All right, thanks for listening. We'll talk to you later. Bye bye.